Okay, guys, now it's time for case number one. Race condition, stealing money from a bank. What I'm going to present to you in this case is how to hack the web application with multi-threading. Multi-threading is very much related to race conditions. Uh, in other words, via multi-threaded attack, we can trigger race condition. And via race condition, we can launch some really powerful attacks, for example, stealing money from a bank. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you here in this case. Of course, um, I'm not going to hack a real bank. This is the training. And whatever I'm presenting here is for educational purposes only. But to show you how it works and to show you the power of race condition exploitation, I need to have a demo and I have one. And my demo is located at training.local slash bank in my testing environment. So let me go there right now and let me show you how this attack works step by step. Okay, here is my demo. What I can do in this demo is I can transfer money from one account to another account. To be more precise, I can transfer money from Michael's account to James' account. And the current balance is $1,000. So I cannot transfer more than $1,000, right? And if I try to do it, and for example, if I try to transfer $1,001, which is more than $1,000, uh, then I will see a message failure. You don't have $1,001. Well, this is very much expected. And if I was able to do it, then there would be a disaster in the system, right? So uh, this is how it works. This is how my uh, demo looks like. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move uh, smoothly to uh, the attack that I'm going to actually present here. And the attack is race conditions stealing money from a bank. So right now you can see that I cannot transfer more money than I have. But what you will see in the upcoming minutes of this video is that actually I can withdraw more money than I have via race condition exploitation. And it's gonna be really great, really beautiful, and it's gonna be an eye opener uh, for, for many people that we can do something like this via race condition exploitation. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's do it. Let me show you how it works. So now I'm gonna present to you how this attack works, how to trigger race condition and how to steal money from a bank. But we also need some technical explanation behind this attack. So once this attack is presented to you, once you see the power of this attack, then I will jump to the whiteboard and I will try to explain to you why it actually works, okay? So first I will present you that indeed it works and how to make it work. And later on, I will explain you some technical details behind this attack so that you can really understand you know, why it works. Great. So uh, let's do it. Uh, let me uh, present this attack uh, to you. As I told you at the very beginning, we are talking here about multi-threaded attack. So multi-threading is a kind of prerequisite or starting point for this attack. So we need a kind of a tool that supports multi-threading. I could use Burp Suite Pro, uh, uh, which is not a free tool. You need to pay for this. Uh, but, you know, I just want you to be able to do all the attacks that I'm presenting here with free tools. So uh, I'm going to use OVASP ZAP instead of Burp Suite Pro in my uh, testing environment in order to show you how it works. First, let me uh, open OVASP ZAP. And what I have to do more uh, right now, the OVASP ZAP is up and running, is I need to tell my browser that now the traffic sent out from my browser should be actually sent to OVASP ZAP, okay? So I need to tell my browser about this. Uh, so yeah, now everything is, uh, let's say, configured properly. 
OVASP zap is up and running and my browser knows that the traffic going out from the browser should be sent to OVASP zap because in a couple of minutes I'm gonna use OVASP zap and multi-threading out there to launch my attack, okay? I hope that you are following me till this point. Uh, great, so now I'm about to uh, send a money transfer request. And what you can see here below is amount $10. So yeah, uh, let's send $10 from one account to another account uh, and uh, let's incorporate this request related with uh, money transfer uh, into multi-threaded attack scenario, okay? So this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So first I need to turn on the interceptor in uh, OVASP ZAP. Now it is turned on and I'm going to uh, click send money, okay? Let me right now go to OVASP ZAP. And what you can see is that indeed the request has been intercepted and this request is responsible for sending $10 from one account uh, to another account, right? And I told you that the crucial part here, the starting point actually of the attack is multi-threading. So I'm going to take this request and I'm going to incorporate this request in multi-threaded attack scenario. And the question is how to do it, how to do it in OVASP ZAP. You can do something like this. You can click right on this request. You can click fuzz. And well, this request actually is going to be used uh, by the fuzzer, right? And first we need to specify the payload, uh, you know, position because this is the fuzzer. So the fuzzer needs to know uh, where the fuzzing should happen, in which place. But in the context of this case that I have here, I don't want to do a fuzzing over a specified parameter. I just want to send this request many times, you know, concurrently in a multi-threaded manner. So the payload is going to be null, empty, right? But I have to tell this message, you know, to, um, to the fuzzer so that it knows that the payload is null, empty. So I'm going to go to payloads right now. I'm going to click add. And I'm going to choose empty null. And now number of repetitions. So how many times I want to uh, send this, uh, you know, a request actually uh, to the web application? Let it be like 200, okay? Why not? So yeah, this is it. And I'm gonna click okay. So I am about to send this one particular request 200 times to the web application. And this request is about uh, money transfer $10 from one account to another. So in the best case scenario from the attacker's point of view, uh, I will be able to withdraw 200 times $10, right? From the account, so $2,000. This is the hypothetical, theoretical, the best case scenario, right? So if I'm able to, if, if I am actually making a money transfer $10, 200 times, then if this exploit works, then at maximum I can, you know, we've wrote $2,000, uh, but this is a theoretical maximum. You will see what it means actually later on uh, in this video, okay? So I believe that this is clear for you. So, so far we have configured uh, the fuzzer to send one request 200 times without any modifications, just the same request. Uh, but as I told you uh, a couple of times already in this video, multi-threading is the prerequisite for this attack. So now you need to go to options here and there is something like concurrent scanning threads per scan. Here our multi-threading can be configured. So uh, let's choose for example 20. Right now the concurrent scanning threads per scan is 20. This is how I'm configuring multi-threaded attack in my fuzzer, okay? Which is really fundamental piece of, of this exploit here. Great. 
So right now uh, I've got everything. I've got multi-threading implemented. I'm about to send this request 200 times. So let me do it right now and let me click start fuzzer. You know, it's blazing fast. We've got multi-threading, we've got concurrency here. So uh, it has been finished uh, very quickly. Now let me release the interceptor here. Let me refresh my web application and let me show you what's the consequence of, uh, of this attack, okay? What you can see here is that, uh, well, I was able to transfer $1,090. It's really cool. I had only 1,000 and I was able to transfer more. I was able to transfer $1,090. So you can clearly see Michael, $0, James, $1,090. It's just, you know, amazing. It works. This is how you can actually use multi-threading to trigger race condition and via race condition, how you can steal some money from a bank. So what I have presented so far to you is how this attack works and how to make it work, okay? And you see the power of this attack. But uh, what I have to do uh, more in this video is I just want to explain to you why it works, okay? So let me go right now to the whiteboard and let me provide some uh, more explanation. I have the web application, which is here, and there are many incoming uh, requests, many actually concurrent incoming requests uh, to this web application. And these uh, requests are about to transfer $10 from one account to another account. This is exactly what I presented to you in the demo. So this is my multi-threaded attack actually, right? And now I've got money transfer requests and let's assume that, uh, for example, free requests have already been accepted, okay? So I've got free money transfer requests that have already been accepted. And let me explain to you what it actually means. So when you've got money transfer requests, then the web application has to check whether you've got enough money to you know, make this financial transaction. And if you've got enough money, then the money transfer requests are gonna be accepted. So these three guys, and they are waiting to be processed, okay? So this is what I mean by saying uh, money transfer requests that are accepted. Okay, but what more we're gonna have in the story is we're gonna have the uh, fourth request as well. Let it be the fourth request here. And this request here is where the financial transaction is actually being made. So what we've got is the requests that are, that are accepted and that are waiting to be processed. And we've got uh, one request here that has already been accepted, but this is actually where my financial transaction is being made. So this is a kind of distinction between this guy and these three uh, guys here, okay? So far, so good. So uh, what's going to happen in, in my attack uh, is that the balance sooner or later will go to zero. My attack uh, is about sending $10 and $10 and so on, so on, many times, right? $10, $10 from one account to another account. So sooner or later, the balance indeed will be zero. Now let's assume that once this guy is uh, processed, so once this financial transaction is being made, then uh, the balance is updated and the balance is actually zero, okay? Let's assume something like this. So when the balance is zero here, we've got some really interesting uh, uh, condition here because the balance is right now zero, so it basically means that, well, uh, I cannot uh, send more money from my account because the balance is zero. But please notice that there are free money transfer requests that have already been accepted. So we've got really strange situation. From one point of view, the balance is zero. So no more money should be 
you know, withdrawn or transferred from my account. But on the other hand, free uh, money transfer requests uh, have already been accepted. And these guys will be processed even further because they have been accepted before the balance went to zero. And these three guys here are actually responsible for stealing more money from a bank. This is actually how race condition works. Now, let me tell you one, why we've got a race condition here. Well, indeed, we've got a race because the question is like this. How many threads are going to be accepted, right? How many money transfer requests are going to be accepted before the balance goes to zero? That's the question. And the more money transfer requests going to be accepted before the balance goes to zero, the more money the attacker can steal uh, from the bank, right? This is how it works. This is a race. Who's going to be faster, right? And the, the number of um, money transfer requests uh, that are going to be accepted before the balance goes to zero, uh, well, is, is dependent on many different things. Um, that's why this attack is non-deterministic. What I mean here is that the network performance has an impact on this attack. Uh, the performance of the machine where the web application is hosted uh, has also, you know, impact on this attack. Think about swapping, right? When we've got a swapping on the machine where your web application is hosted, it also has an impact on, on this attack. And this attack is about concurrency, multi-threading and fractions of milliseconds. So you see that this is indeed a race. Uh, and yeah, uh, this, is, um, this is how it works. And I believe that this is clear for you. Uh, but let me also tell you how to prevent it from happening because this is also interesting. Um, well, what we should do is uh, we should never accept the next money transfer request before uh, the money transaction request, the previous one, is being finished, okay? So first, what we should have is this guy should finish, then the balance should be updated, and once the balance is updated, then we should accept the new uh, incoming money transfer request, right? And then we are guaranteed that uh, race condition will not happen. So one thread at a time. When you are here making a transaction, then let's do it. Let's finish it. Then let's update the balance. Then check the balance and then allow or disallow the next thread, the next uh, money transfer request, okay? So one thread at a time only in the system would prevent this uh, attack for happening. So I believe that this is clear for you. And if you're going to implement this countermeasure, then I recommend you to implement actually the transactions in the databases because this is going to solve uh, your problems. OK, so I believe that uh, this is clear for you. Let me right now go to the slides and uh, let me wrap up what I presented here. So I used many concurrent requests to transfer $10 from one account to another account. And I presented to you that the race condition happens when money transfer requests are accepted faster than financial transactions are being made, right? This is what I actually tried to explain to you on the whiteboard. And when the balance goes to zero, there are still a few money transfer requests, already accepted ones, that are waiting to be processed. So this is how we can actually steal money from a bank via race condition. And finally, I presented to you, you know, a kind of high level overview of the countermeasure. Uh, for uh, this attack because you definitely uh, don't uh, want this attack to have an impact on your own systems. So I also mentioned transactions and how to fix the, the problem that I uh, discussed here. Okay, so I believe that you really like this case and you see the power of race condition exploitation. So we are right now done with this case uh, and in the next one, in the case number two, 
I will dive even more into race condition exploitation and we're gonna have even more fun with this kind of attack. So uh, yeah, we are done with this case. So let's right now jump to the next one.